You want to stand out. You want to be great. You are significant. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Charissa. I know it's been a minute, but we are back and this season six is about to be lit. It's about to be hot and it's about to be all about you, you, you. Why? I'm interested in watching the legacy that you want to build and that you want to leave because you want to be transformed and you want to transform lives. So this season is going to be all about you, 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 your self-development, your self-growth, and your self-leadership. Why? Because you get to change the world. You get to fulfill a purpose. And guess what? Here at Candid Conversations, I get to help you leave a mark in this world. Living the life you were created for. How do you do that? I'm so glad you asked. Another relevant question. Because if you don't ask, how do I live the life that I was created for? There may be part of you that's just living. And sometimes just living and not living for a purpose, not living for a reason, not living on purpose. You may just be wasting time. You may be having too much fun. Yes. Yes, there is such thing as too much fun if you're not having a meaningful level of living on purpose to begin with. So I want to answer the question, how do I live the life that I was created for? And I'm gonna give you three how-tos and then I'm gonna throw in a bonus or two. So the first thing you wanna look at, first of all, before we even get started, you may say, what is a life worth living? What is the life that I was created for? But we have to start with understanding that if you were created for something, that means you were born with a purpose. I know people say, oh, purpose is overrated. We talk about it all the time. You're probably tired of hearing me talk about it, but you're gonna always hear me talk about purpose, living a life on purpose, uncovering your purpose, discovering who you are, because if you are living a life without purpose, you might as well be dead. Yes, I will say it again. If you are not living a life with purpose, If you are living a life without purpose, you might as well be dead. And the fact that you are living, the fact that you can hear me, the fact that you can see me, the fact that you can, if you were in my presence, you can feel me, is because you are breathing. And if you are breathing, there is still life for you to live. So why not live it on purpose? Why not live it for the reason you were created? Why not live it actually doing something good and positive in the world? So let's talk about how. Number one, we've been talking about all all this time, uncover your purpose. The first thing you want to do is understand your why. Why were you created to begin with? When you can understand your why, then you can work towards actually living in that why. Is there a difference? Yes. A lot of us understand that we were created, but we don't then live on that understanding. We don't apply the understanding of the why to our everyday living. So I may understand that I was created to make a change, to make a difference in this world, but I may decide to never do exactly that. I may decide that it's too much work. I may decide I don't wanna wake up until three o'clock in the afternoon every day. I may decide to watch TV and play games all day for my entire life. I may decide to do things out of order and out of sorts and never once do anything that's going to lead me forward to the understanding that I actually was created for a purpose. Versus being someone who understands that I have a purpose, now let me figure out how do I apply that purpose and that understanding 
to my everyday living. And that's called wisdom. And sometimes we need to tap into a power higher than us to understand how do I apply and how do I live the life that I was created on purpose, for purpose. And so the first thing you wanna do is uncover your purpose. And I know there are times you have heard people say uncover your purpose, discover your purpose. I prefer the word uncover when it comes to purpose because I understand that there are different levels and different layers of our purpose that is exposed to us or even exposed to the world as we grow and as we mature and as we experience and get older in life. So the part of you or the age that you are or the person that you are five years ago could not handle the level of your purpose that is, that is exposed today. But it does not mean that you were not operating in and living in your purpose five years ago. It just means that five years later, you were prepared and you were developed and you were more matured for the other level and greatness of your purpose five years later. And five years from now, you will be surprised of how much more of your purpose is going to be exposed as you continue to live the life you were created for. You'll be uncovering a layer every time you grow. You'll be uncovering a layer every time you mature. You'll be uncovering a layer every time you experience. You'll be uncovering a, la a layer every time you move forward, every time you move up. And be grateful for that because I think about myself. Imagine if I had gone through what I had went through seven, eight, nine years ago when my parents passed suddenly and the purpose for which I was living for then. My purpose is wrapped up in serving people and serving the less fortunate. But I was doing it in a certain level, in a certain way then. Then my parents pass and there's a certain way or a certain level of my purpose that was exposed to me that I didn't think I was ready for. I didn't want, it was new, it was fresh. I was in the spotlight, I was doing something that I was completely afraid of and I'm like, what is this? But as I started to actually do it, even though I was scared, do it scared, and I actually decided to put one foot in front of the other and make that step, I realized that I was actually more prepared and more informed than I thought I was. And it's because there was a level of my purpose at that time that I was prepared for the minute it was exposed to me. Versus if someone had told me five, 10 years before that I would be doing what I'm doing now, then I would have said no. Why? I was not in a mature place. I was not in a place of growth. I was complacent and perfectly fine in the place where I was. And then when it was time for change, that required a different level of growth, a different level of understanding, a different level of wisdom. And so here I am. And then I know that 10 years later, five years from now, three years from now, there's going to be another layer of my great purpose, the reason why I was created, that's gonna be even ex more exposed to me. And I'm gonna to have to answer the call, Sharissa, are you ready? So when I say uncover your purpose, uncovering your purpose as you move through the different areas and phases of your life, that's the first thing you wanna do. Uncover your why. Secondly, you wanna discover who you are. And discovering who you are is understanding and discovering your identity. Where are you from? And we wanna make that a focal point as to who I am because who you are is very di directly related to why you are. And sometimes you can't understand one without understanding the other. It's gonna be there very difficult for us to understand the, un the uncovering in our purpose and why we were created without actually also discovering and understanding who am I? What is my identity? What am I linked to? What is my source? And understanding who you are is the image that you have, the likeness that you have, whose image and whose likeness. When you look in the mirror, whether you look in a physical mirror or you look in a figurative mirror, who am I? And you get to answer that question and you get to discover who you are as you get older because who I am 
as Charissa five years ago is not the same person I am today. And I'm not the same person I am today five years ago because the level of purpose that I was operating at five years ago required a different person five years ago. A more mature person that I am now required the level of purpose of which I'm functioning at today. And then you're going to continue to discover who you are three to five to 10 years from now as you also uncover levels of your purpose. So you see how your identity and your purpose, your why and your who are very relational. They're very connected. They're directly related to each other. And so, so there are times when we're gonna have to recognize my purpose wants to be uncovered, this layer, this other level of my creativity and why I was created wants to be uncovered, but what's keeping me stuck? What's causing me to be arrested at this level of identity? And sometimes we have to work on who we are. We have to sometimes dive deep and go deep and put in some work to unleash the growth of who we are so that we can be prepared and to full capacity to be able to operate and function in our next level of purpose. Thirdly, you wanna make sure you know and understand and develop your gifts or your potential. What is your potential? What can you do? So we know that there's a why, why you are here, why you were created. We know that you are who, who you are and why that's important. But then we get to understand what can you do? What about you makes you the perfect person for the why you were created? What are your gifts and what are your talents? And one day we're gonna talk about what's the difference between the two. But what are your gifts and what are your talents that makes you qualified? Your potential, your what can I do, is what qualifies you for the why you are, which further quantifies who you are. You wanna write that down, tweet that like they say? So when we get to know, and I say know, understand, and develop, because all three of those things are very important. So once you know, once you know and you acknowledge and you recognize, man, these are my gifts, I'm very good at this, these are my talents, I have these, these are my passions, you can know them and people stop right there. I can know I can paint and never paint. Or I can know I can paint, I can paint every day, but I can never develop the skill. So sometimes taking the time to develop what you know can put you so much further ahead of the game than someone else who just decides, oh, I know what I can do. I know I have this gift. I know I have this talent. I have no understanding of what it is, so I'm not gonna do anything about it. Versus someone who says, man, I know this. Can I understand what this means? And then when they understand, then they get to say, how do I develop this gift? And how do I develop this talent? Imagine understanding and knowing the talents that you have that can make you successful, that can make you impactful, that can make you significant, and that can allow you to leave a mark in this world. That can be you if you just decide to take the time to know and recognize and understand what your talents are, what your gifts are, what's your potential, all the same in this, in this instance, and what can you do with them and how you can develop and refine them so that make, they can make you a better who, which also makes you better prepared and qualified for your why. Again, they're all connected. Your why, your who, and your what are all connected to you living the life you were created for. And those are the three things that I want us to focus on. And then I wanted to throw in two bonuses for you because these are sometimes <laughs> they are they're not talked about enough. And when they are, they're not talked about enough in this in this type of going in this type of instance. And so one of the things that I want to encourage you to do when you talk about living a life on purpose or living the life you were created for, yes, your purpose, your why, your who, and your what is important. 
At the same time you're doing that, make sure you are always, when I say always, always high spirited. And I say high spirited in that you are always laughing. Always find a reason to laugh. Find a reason to be in, in, in a state of humor. Find a reason to be able to, even when you are operating in your purpose, when you are functioning in your talents, find a way to, and reason to laugh. There, we have enough reasons to be sad, to cry, to be hurt, to be in pain. But we have even more reason to laugh. Uh, Y'all know I love this book, it's called The Bible. And in Proverbs it says, a cheerful heart is a good life medicine. Imagine, we take medicine for everything else. We take medicine when we have a cold, we take medicine when we have a headache, we take medicine when our stomach is hurting, we take medicine when we're constipated, we take medicine when we just don't feel well. They give you medicine when you're depressed, they give you medicine when you have anxiety. But why not take the greatest medicine you can to life that is free, no insurance needed to pay, it is, when I say it is accessible to everybody, you just get to take that medicine that will actually allow your life to be great from one day to the next by just laughing. Like literally just laughing. And I know, and one thing about laughter, laughter is very contagious, very contagious. To the point where you can see a group of people laughing, you can hear somebody laughing, you don't even know what they're laughing for and literally it will make you smile and it may even make you crack a laugh. And then you're gonna say, what you laughing for? Well, there's a part of me that wanna ask you what you laughing for. But it's because laughing is contagious. And if it all means that I get to make your day a better day for, for you, if I get to make my day a better day for me by just laughing, then why not give your life and yourself the greatest medicine you can? So, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna laugh and I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh and I wish, if you start laughing, put it in the comments right now. I just laughed because literally, <laughs> it's gonna be so difficult. It's gonna be so difficult to watch somebody else laugh, especially when there's so much joy and you not laugh. And you, it's fine for you to ask me why you laughing at the end, but I just wanna see you laugh. Laugh does so much goodness to the Spirit. It lifts your spirit. It lifts your soul. It allows you to be able to do more of the understanding of your purpose and the understanding of who you are and the understanding of your talents and your gifts. It allows you to do more of that because you're, you just feel lighter and you just feel freer and you get to laugh. So if you guys see this room that I'm in right now with my production team, if I just bust out laughing, like I know my camera guy is going to bust out laughing and he is just gonna make me laugh even more. But hey, this is what we do, right? So let's practice it right now. Like you don't even need, you can breathe, you laugh. You can clap your hands, you laugh. You have a kidney, you laugh. You have a job, you laugh. You have children and a marriage, you laugh. You have hair, you laugh. Well, my husband kinda doesn't have hair. But you have a head, you laugh. Like there's, you have all sorts of reasons <laughs> to laugh. You have so much reasons to laugh. Like literally, it is the greatest medicine ever, guys. Like I love it, I love it, I love it. But that is what brings me so much joy. And it's that laughing and that medicine that allows me to come here every week to share my life, to share inspiration, to share motivation, to share transformation that I've been through just to share with you so that hopefully just one life I can change and one life I can impact. Because why? I decide to give myself that medicine every day. Whether I find it within myself to just laugh or whether I put myself in the presence of someone that all they have to do is say something funny or not so funny and I just laugh. Laughter and anger cannot live together. Laughter and sadness cannot live together. I remember when my parents passed 2014. That's about nine, seven, eight, nine years ago. And for some odd reason, during the week when they passed, something, so 
social media is this thing. And there was something that had become really, really big on social media during the time. And believe it or not, and it was one of the worst times and seasons of my life, but every day when we got up as a family and we got together, we found a commonality in laughing at this person who was very funny, something he had done, and we found a commonality in just laughing, I said, every day for at least a week or two in something he had done. Now we could have looked at that and we could have been so broken and so hurt that we couldn't even laugh. But we did, like I will never forget that nine years later, I still remember no matter how hurt we were, no matter how devastated we are, no matter how depressed we wanted to be, we still found a moment to laugh. And I think it is that laughter that brought, that kept us together. It is that laughter that brought us together. It is that laughter that allowed our physical beings to just be so alive and stay alive, even in a moment when death could have taken over. So when I say laugh, guys, give yourself the greatest gift of laughter. If you want to continue living the life you were created in order to do the first three things we talked about. And the last bonus one that I want to give you is make sure you are connected to something or someone higher than yourself. Never allow yourself to be the highest and supreme entity in your life. Imagine you were the only highest entity in your life that you answer to, but you're always sad and you're always depressed. That means you have nothing outside of yourself to look up to. You have nothing outside of yourself to possibly change your mood. You have not, nothing outside of yourself to go to for that medicine of laughter that we talked about. For me, it's Jesus Christ. And the connection and relationship that I have with him is what allows me to go to him every second of the day for a new prescription of laughter. And that laughter and that medicine is what allows me to be able to continue uncovering my purpose, discovering who I am, and understanding and developing my gifts. So that every day, every month, every year of my life, I'm living a life that I was created for. And that is how you can live the life you are created for. Now, that is not the end all be all list, but it is the list that I want to encourage you to at least start today. And starting with, if nothing else, start with making sure you have a relationship and engage with someone higher than yourself. I get my joy, I get my comfort, I get my peace from God. I get my relationship, I get my example, I get my guidance from God. I don't do what I do without him. I still do what I do, but I don't do it without him. I still live life on purpose, but I don't do it without him. I show up to you every week, but I don't do it without him. I laugh, but I don't do it without him. If anything, I do it because of him. Again, another time that I hope that everything I said, if you just applied one thing, would change your life. If you just shared it with one person to possibly change their life. My desire and my goal is to just impact and change lives one person at a time. And I hope that is you today. You know I love to hear your comments. Let me know if you laugh when I laugh. Let me know if you're still laughing. I love reading them. Until next time, make sure that you are living the life you were created for. See you soon. Are you ready? After just listening to that, are you ready? I know you're ready. So if you want to now get up and go and start acting and putting forth what it is that you want the world to know and that you want to serve, now is the time and you are well equipped. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and make sure you comment below. I enjoy reading your comments. Go ahead and make your mark in the world because you are great.